Pearls are some of the most valuable gems known to mankind. With its global market value growing at an astounding rate of 13% annually, it is not surprising that a single pearl jewelry can cost over $1.5 million. However, the high value attached to these shiny stones can be fully justified by the unique and extremely laborious process through which they are formed. While all other gems are formed deep in the earth, pearls are the only gem made by living organisms. Marine oysters and other freshwater mussels produce pearls in a natural process that occurs when they instinctively react in self-defense against irritants or foreign bodies inside them. However, since natural pearls can only be found in one out of 10,000 oysters, Men have developed ingenious methods of cultivating oysters and including them to produce pearls in large quantities. Such is the case with the Ature Pearl Farm, located on some of the world's most beautiful coastlines from northwestern Australia to the tropical Indonesian islands of West Java, Lombok, and Zumbawa. Lombok Island boasts about 24 active pearl farms and is globally famous for the cultivation of the Golden South Sea cultured pearls. At these 30-year-old pearl farms, sustainable pearl cultivation is a long and complicated process, with hundreds of individual steps that usually take five years to complete. The process begins with juvenile oysters, which are either collected from the wild or by breeding them in specialized hatcheries. To produce high-quality cultured pearls, skilled farmers open up live oysters and implant small shell beads into their soft bowels, a process known as grafting. In reaction to the foreign body inside them, oysters instinctively start to secrete a smooth, crystalline substance known as nacre, a combination of calcium carbonate and protein that is lighter but stronger than concrete. Over time, the oyster will continuously coat the irritating bead with thousands of layers of nacre to form a pearl. Grafting for the production of costly gems, like the South Sea Pearls, takes place when oysters have been carefully nurtured for up to two years in a controlled maritime environment. The growing oysters are hung underwater, suspended with buoys, checked every month, and sometimes taken out of the water to be cleaned. Excess collection of dirt, 
poisonous snails and worms, will interfere with the oyster's feeding and may even attract predators. During cultured pearl production, about 75% of the oysters usually die without forming a single pearl. Despite this high mortality rate, the Aoture pearl farms still produce well over 350,000 South Sea pearls annually. A mature South Sea pearl oyster can grow up to one foot in length and live for 40 years, forming some of the largest and most costly pearls in the world. Panel yang sama seperti yang tadi ada tali-talinya juga, cuman di sini uh, kerang-kerangnya sudah terlihat menempel. Jadi sudah ada beberapa kerang yang kita lihat uh, sudah menempel di sini, di mana-mana mereka menempel. Nah, pada tahap ini itu mereka akan dicek setiap bulan. Jadi di laut itu mereka tidak hanya dibiarkan begitu saja, tapi setiap bulan akan kami angkat. Uh, pertama untuk dibersihkan. Karena kalau sudah di laut, banyak makhluk laut lain yang ikut menempel dan tumbuh di sekitar mereka juga. Bisa jadi itu predator atau kompetitor untuk makanan dari si kerangnya ini sendiri. Jadi setiap bulan itu harus dibersihkan, kemudian diseleksi ukurannya. Jadi kita lihat ukuran bayi-bayi kerang ini karena kan tumbuhnya pasti nggak seragam. Ada yang tumbuhnya lebih cepat, lebih besar ukurannya. As soon as the pearls are ready for harvesting, the mature oysters are sent to the harvesting facility, where the shells must be pried open to complete the extraction. Pearl extraction is done slowly and carefully to avoid scratching the gem and also to avoid harming the oyster. A wooden wedge is driven into one edge of the oyster shell to create a slender aperture through which the pearls can be accessed. Just like midwives, trained oyster harvesters perform this delicate task with gentle, steady hands using specialized instruments. After extraction, pearls are generally immersed in cleansing solutions to thoroughly remove dirt and odors. Some pearls will further undergo controlled bleaching and polishing to enhance their appearance. A sorting sieve is finally used to separate the pearls into their different size groups. Setiap dua tahun kita bisa panen dari kerang yang sama. Jadi ini usia empat tahun. Nanti kita panen lagi tuh usia 6 tahun. Kalau 6 tahun kan mutiaranya semakin besar dan kualitasnya masih bagus, masih mulus dan lain-lain, kita bisa masukkan nukleus lagi yang lebih besar dari ini atau yang sama ukurannya dengan mutiara yang kita panen. Selalu seperti itu. Jadi seperti nukleusnya ini kayak menggantikan si mutiara yang kita ambil tadi. Jadi kerangnya tetap melapisi seperti itu. Kalau kita bandingkan misalnya ini Mutiara yang baru saja kita panen, ukurannya kurang lebih kira-kira ini 9 mili diameternya. Kemudian kita bandingkan dengan nukleus yang kita tanamkan tadi. Jadi dari nukleus yang ini kita bisa dapatkan ukuran mutiara sebesar ini. And when they are used to making jewelry, these queen of gems are able to maintain their brilliance for up to 50 years remaining as beautiful as the day they left the jeweler's store.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.